Our dinosaur of the day is Dinochirus myrificus, and that name means terrible hand. It lived in the Cretaceous about 70 million years ago, and originally in 1965, only its arms were found in Mongolia's Gobi Desert. So for many years, paleontologists kept returning to the formation where the arms were found to try to find the rest of the body, but it wasn't until 2009 that anyone found anything, which made this dinosaur a huge mystery. So for 50 years, all they knew about it was that it had two giant arms, and each arm was 8 feet long with three 8-inch claws. So, of course, there were a lot of theories on what kind of dinosaur this was. Some people thought it was a T-Rex because of the claws, or it was a giant sloth-like creature. Others thought that it might be over 100 feet long. Yeah, I remember going to museums and seeing replicas of these arms and claws with little statements like, who knows what kind of creature had these arms, and all the things I had imagined aren't even close to as interesting as what the animal actually is like. So Young Nam Lee from the Korea Institute of Geoscience and Mineral Resources and his team found Dinochirus in August 2009 at Mongolia's Nemeg Formation. Poachers had already taken bones from the site, but they had left the arm of Dinochirus in a mostly complete skeleton, but it was missing parts of its spine, right arm, and hands. So Dr. Phil Curry, who we had on the show in episode 4 about Tarbosaurus, was part of that team, and he said that they liked investigating looted quarries because they sometimes found things of significance. In 2011, a Belgian scientist called Curry because he thought he had found the missing Dinochirus fossils. It turned out to be from the same specimen that they had already found in 2009, which is really interesting. Dr. Sugbiter Chinzorig of the Mongolian Academy of Sciences Paleontological Center and his colleagues were the ones who analyzed and put together the fossils. Dinochirus was described in Nature Journal in 2014, which is how it made the list of 2014 biggest dinosaur discoveries. Originally, Dinochirus was classified as Carnosauria in the theropod group because of those big arms with their imposing claws. But now it's considered to be a primitive Ornithomimosaurian related to Garudmimus and Bay Shanlong in the family Dinochiridae. Both Dinochirus and Spinosaurus are examples of dinosaurs that look completely different from what scientists originally thought. In both cases, the mistakes were made by trying to infer what an animal may have looked like or how it behaved based on similar relatives. But like we talked about in the Spinosaurus episode, it's completely different than some of its closest relatives. And according to the paleontologist Lee, quote, Dinochirus was much weirder than anyone could have imagined, which he uses as a cautionary tale from predicting what a body looks like based on partial skeletons. So the dinosaur has been likened to Jar Jar from Star Wars because it was big and slow and it had a beak. Dinochirus was about 11 meters or 35 feet long and weighed about 6 tons, which is about the size of a T-Rex, although a little smaller. It didn't have a strong bite like T-Rex, and instead it had a duck-like mouth with no teeth. So Dinochirus walked upright on its two legs because it had its, you know, its front arms were actually like arms, so it didn't use them to hold its weight, and it walked with its arms out in front of it. Dinochirus had a narrow body, and it had ten neck vertebrae that were low and long, but they got shorter as they got farther away from the skull, and that seems to mean that Dinochirus had an S-curved back, kind of like a goose or something. Dinochirus had 12 back vertebrae, and much like Spinosaurus, they had a similar ratio of height of neural spines to the vertebrae. Dr. Chin Zorig said that Dinochirus had tall dorsal spines like Spinosaurus, truncated hoof-like claws on its feet so it wouldn't sink in muddy grounds, and bulky hind legs like tyrannosaurids with sauropod-like hips and a hadrosaur-like <laughs> duck bill. Yeah, so when I hear that, I immediately think of the platypus with the duck bill and all the other parts of different animals smooshed together into just a nonsensical animal. <laughs> <laughs> it's also been described as having a camel-like hump instead of a sail like a Spinosaurus, although it would have been 
thicker than the sail of a Spinosaurus, and the neck of an ostrich. Yeah, super weird. Although, when we talked about Spinosaurus, we mentioned that there were some that theorized it had a camel-like hump, too. So I'm curious to see if, as time goes on, they decide that maybe it was more like the Spinosaurus. And the duck-like bill that it had was round and had a flat beak that was covered in keratin. Its lower jaw was much bigger and deeper compared to its slender upper jaw, so I guess it had kind of an up underbite, and its upper jaw was similar in size to a tyrannosaur, but like we mentioned, it didn't have much biting force by comparison. Gynachyrus had blunt short claws that were similar to the Therizinosaur Alchosaurus, and it used the claws for digging and gathering plants. It also had a tail fused into a piga style, which supports tail feathers in modern birds, so it probably had a fan of tail feathers <laughs> in addition to its beak and be- hump. <laughs> <laughs> so Dinochirus is technically an ornithomimosaur, which is the word for ostrich-like dinosaur, and they're known for being fast, but Dinochirus is too big to be fast, so it was pretty a- slow, actually, even compared to humans. Most ostrich-like dinosaurs... We're only a little bit bigger than people, but this thing, if you look at a picture of it next to a human, it it looks like a T-Rex, you know, we're dwarfed by the thing. So the fact that it evolved so giant is probably why it looks so weird. Lee and his team found bite marks on the Dinochirus, which makes them think that they were prey for the actual Tyrannosaur that was around in the time and places, the same time and place as them, which is Tarbosaurus. Dr. Curry, who we got to interview and talked at length about Tarbosaurus, said that Dinochirus' giant size probably helped protect it from Tarbosaurus. Dinochirus is probably a mega omnivore, which means that it pretty much ate everything it found. (laughs) Dinochirus ate soft plants, especially ones that grew at the bottom of streams and lakes. It probably used its duck bill to get at them, and then sucked up the plants with its big tongue inside its lower jaw. To grind up the food, it swallowed stones that we've mentioned before called gastroliths, like ostrich and other modern birds do. And Lee and his team found over 1,400 of those gastroliths inside the Dinochirus specimens that they discovered. They also found fish remains, which means Dinochirus probably spent a lot of time in fresh water and, again, could eat anything, so fish, small vertebrates, and plants. It's been described as a garbage disposal type of dinosaur that probably used its large hands to either dig for food or pull down branches. Yeah, it's about the last thing you'd imagine when you see these huge clawed hand is digging for, like, garbage to eat, but, uh, yeah, there you go. So Dinochirus is one of the largest ornithomimosaurs but it had hollow bones to keep it lightweight. And of bipedal dinosaurs, it had the largest arms. Dinochirus was probably diurnal, and it also had a pretty small brain size compared to its body. And actually, the ratio of brain to body size is similar to that of sauropods, which is not like other ornithomimosaurs that had (laughs) proportional-sized brains. Yeah, and if you think about sauropods, kind of like a big cow, they don't really have to think too much because they're just grazing all day, and that kind of matches with uh, Dinochirus' lifestyle of just grazing on everything around rather than, you know, running and hunting or things the theropod would do that they originally thought it was. So Dinochirus is part of the family Dinochiridot, which lived about 115 to 69 million years ago. They were named because of Dinochirus' unique arms, and again, originally scientists thought Dinochirus was a carnosaur. As we mentioned, Dinochirodot is part of the group Ornithomimosaurus. Ornithomimosaurus skulls were small with large eyes and slender necks. Most of them had toothless beaks, although some primitive species had teeth. Ornithomimosaurus had long arms with powerful claws, so... Dinochirus actually had that in common with the rest of its cousins. <laughs> but its long hind limbs and strong toes and hoof-like claws made them some of the fastest dinosaurs. And they had feathered, not scaly hides. 
Another thing we might have had in common. Yeah, it's over that speed. <laughs> Ornithomimosaurs ate plants, and many of them have been found with gastrolis in their stomachs, like Dinochirus. There were so many of them, which is why scientists think they were herbivores, but they could have also been omnivores and eaten small animals. Ornithomimosaurs may have been cuthemoral, which means they were active during the day at short intervals, and this, again, is something else Dinochirus does not have in common with them, since it was probably diurnal. 